So just keep this in mind. This Cartesian equation of the plane, it's very useful. It gives you better approach, more like a uh, express way of dealing with planes. But unfortunately, this express way, it only works in three dimensions. It doesn't work in higher dimensions like the previous one. So let's just, I'll show you how the, these are normally connected together. Uh, look at this. Imagine we start with the vector equation of the plane like this. We got three vectors, we got the parameters, lambda and mu, everything is in place. Now, this vector equation, in case of three dimensions, can be converted, every time can be converted, into a Cartesian equation, and that's how it is normally done. And you will see in the end of it what exactly I mean by the Cartesian equation. So what you do, you just remember, we, we are in R3, so every vector corresponds to the column of three numbers or triple of numbers. Here's my correspondence. Imagine this is, the this is the coordinates of my A vector. These are the coordinates of my B vector. These are the coordinates of my C vector. <coughs> it's a natural choice in general considerations, right? You just use letter A, letter B, and letter C. So if I build this into my, if I put this into my vector equation of the plane, that will be something like this. I multiply this with the parameter lambda, sorry, this one with the parameter mu, this one with the parameter lambda, and I equate this to the vector x, which again has the components like this. I haven't done much of the thinking in this line, I just expressly given the components of each of the vectors involved in this, in this plane. Normally, something, some, one of you came to me last time and said, like, a, uh, what do we do with the, well, actually, it was a little bit different question, but what I'm trying to say is that normally in three dimensions, it is, it is conventional when we name the unknowns or components of the X vector with X, Y, Z. This is a pure historical kind of uh, attachment, not, nothing wrong with the naming them x1, x2, x3, but in three dimensions, x, x, y, z, it's a very natural choice as well. So probably I will stick with this choice. Now what you do is this, you just equate this left-hand side and this right-hand side in a per-component fashion, so little x here equal to the whole piece in here. I'll do it in the this, in this express way, so I'll take this coefficient with no parameter, and I'll move it on the left-hand side straight away, so that will be something like this, x take a1, this is the one, this is this, this x, take this a1, this is my left-hand side, and on the right-hand side I have lambda b1 and c1, here it is. I can do the same manipulations for the second and the third component, here they are. Now, what you do next to come up with the Cartesian equation is this. Well, you see, that's how I said it. That's what you do next. Uh, there is some computations behind this uh, arrow and dots, and I just explained them to you in a rather abstract fashion, and I'll show you this on the example which will follow right after this, but listen to this, what you do. You pick two of these equations, any two, in fact, will do. But it's, it, uh, of course, we leave it, uh, you have to pick those which will make the computation easier. And that's, I can't give you the advice how to do that. It's just only the intuition which will suggest you which those two to pick. And you only can train that intuition by doing more exam, by, by doing the examples. But you pick two of those, and you solve for lambda and mu in those two. And after you've done that, you take the solutions and you put in the third one, which is left. By doing so, you will eliminate the presence of lambda and mu in this third one. All you will come up with will be just x, y, and z. And that, exact, that is exactly the Cartesian equation of the line, which will correspond to this original vector equation. So listen to this again. You take two of the equations, you solve for lambda and mu, and you sub in in the third one, by completely eliminating the presence of lambda and mu. All you will end up with will be x, y, and z, and the equation in terms of this x, y, and z, your Cartesian equation of the line. So eventually, after you do all of the simplifications, you will have something like this. x with some b coefficient, after all of your manipulations, y with some another coefficient, 
which will be the cumulative coefficient of all of your operations, will be y. Sorry, x, y, and z with all of these free coefficients. There will be some free term with no variable, with no unknowns next to it. And you can equate everything to zero after that. The expression like this is something we call the Cartesian equation of the line. These dots and this arrow, they hide the computational part of this process. And I'll just demonstrate this on the example which will follow immediately. Before we go on, I have to mention one thing which we'll probably establish uh, in more rigorous terms a bit later, but it's still something worth remembering. These coefficients, A, B, and C, some of you may know it already. Do you know what's the geometrical meaning of those coefficients? It is, if you don't know that, it's, 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 it's nothing. I mean, it's a further, it's not a difficult result. Uh, it, and we will establish that a bit later, but it's still worth remembering right now, just for the general knowledge. These three coefficients, if you combine them in a vector, in a vector like this, Okay, we will, we will see this later in, a, in, a further in, a, in more details, but just for now, remember that this three, A, B, and C, the geometrical meaning of these coefficients as a vector, it will be the vector perpendicular to the plane. 